Hello and welcome back to your own channel Judicious and welcome to the third lecture of the Body Language Speaks Volume series. So today's session we start with the eye signal gestures. When you are giving a visual presentation using books, charts, graphs and so on, research shows that of the information relayed to a person's brain, 87% comes via the eyes, 9% via the ears and 4% via the other senses. To maintain maximum control of audience gaze, use a pen or pointer to point to the visual aid and at the same time verbalize what he sees. Next, lift the pen from the visual aid and hold it between his eyes and your own eyes. This has the magnetic effect of lifting his head so that he is looking at your eyes now and he sees and hears what you are saying, thus achieving maximum absorption of your message. Smoking and spectacles gestures. Smoke up gesture. A person who is feeling positive, superior or confident will blow the smoke in an upward direction most of the time. Smoke down gesture. A person in a negative, secretive or suspicious frame of mind will blow the smoke down most of the time. Glasses in mouth gesture. This gesture can be used to stall or delay a decision. In negotiating, it has been found that this gesture appears most frequently at the close of the discussion when the person has been asked for a decision. The act of continually taking the glasses off and cleaning the lenses is another method used by spectacle wearers to gain time for a decision. When this gesture is seen immediately after a decision has been asked for, silence is the best approach. If the person puts the glasses back on, this often means that he wants to see the facts again. Whereas folding the glasses and putting them away signals an intention to terminate the conversation. Ownership gestures. People lean against other people or objects to show a territorial claim to that object or person. Leaning can also be used as a method of dominance or intimidation when the object being leaned on belongs to someone else. For example, if you are going to take a photograph of a friend and his new car, boat, home or other personal belonging, you will inevitably find that he leans against his newly acquired property, putting his foot on it or his arm around it. When he touches the property, it becomes an extension of his own body and in this way he shows others that it belongs to him. The leg over chair or both feet on the desk gesture not only signifies the man's ownership of that particular chair or space but also signals that customary etiquettes may be relaxed. Mirror image gestures. This carbon copying is a means by which one person tells the other that he is in agreement with his ideas and attitudes. By this method, one is non-verbally saying to the other, as you can see, I think the same as you, so I will copy your posture and gestures. If an employer wishes to develop an immediate rapport and create a relaxed atmosphere with an employee, he need only copy the employee's posture to achieve this end. Similarly, an up-and-coming employee may be seen copying his boss's gestures in an attempt to show agreement. Using this knowledge, it is possible to influence a face-to-face -face encounter by copying the positive gestures and postures of the other person. This has the effect of putting the other person in a receptive and relaxed frame of mind, as he can see that you understand his point of view. Body lowering gestures. Historically, Lowering the height of one's body in front of another person has been used as a means of establishing superior subordinate relationships. We refer to a member of royalty as your highness, whereas individuals who commit unsavory acts are called low. Let us examine the non-verbal aspects of the situation in which you have been speeding in your car and are stopped by the policeman. In this situation, number one, the policeman approaches your vehicle and a driver's usual reaction is to remain in the car, roll the window down and make excuses for having exceeded the speed limit. Number two, by remaining in your car, you create a barrier between yourself and the policeman. Number three, under these circumstances, the police officer is obviously in a superior position to you. This type of behavior only serves to make things go from bad to worse and your chances of being booked are increased. Instead, try this if you are flagged down. Number one, get immediately out of your car and go over to the police officer's car. Number two, stoop your body over so that you are smaller than he is. Number three, 
lower your own status by telling the officer how foolish and irresponsibly you have acted and raise his status by thanking him. Number four, with your palms out, request him not to give you a ticket. When this technique is used as directed, it can save you from being booked more than 50% of the time. Pointing gestures. Open formation gesture. People in most English-speaking countries stand with their bodies oriented to form an angle of 90 degrees during ordinary social interactions. The two men in the picture are displaying similar status by holding similar gestures and posture and the angle formed by their torsos indicate that an impersonal conversation is probably taking place. The formation of the triangle invites a third person of similar status to join the conversation. When a fourth person is accepted into the group, a square will be formed and for a fifth person, either a circle or two triangles. Two formation gestures. When intimacy or privacy is required by two people, the angle formed by their torsos decreases from 90 degrees down to 0 degrees. A man wishing to attract a female partner uses this gesture. To accept his approach, she need only orient her torso angle to 0 degrees. Inclusion and Exclusion Techniques Here is a pictorial depiction of inclusion technique where an open triangular position is formed for accepting third person. And this is the pictorial depiction of exclusion technique where third person is not accepted by the first two. Interviewing two people Let us assume that you, person C, are going to interview or talk to persons A and B. Let us say that by either choice or circumstance, you are sitting in a triangular position at a round table. Let us also assume that person A is very talkative and asks many questions and that person B remains silent throughout. When A asks you a question, how can you answer him and carry on a conversation without making B feel excluded? Use the simple but highly effective inclusion technique. When A asks a question, look at him as you begin to answer. Then turn your head towards B. Then back to A. Then to B again until you make your final statement looking at A. Who asked the question as you finish your sentence? This technique lets B feel involved in the conversation and is particularly useful if you need to have B on side with you. Foot pointing gestures. The foot indicates the direction in which a person would like to go. But they are also used to point at people who are interesting or attractive. That's all I have for the moment in this lecture series about body language speaks volumes. I hope you liked the video and got the hang of it. Till the time we meet next, it's Neemit Sharma signing off. Bye-bye and take care. Thank you so much.